have news again at eight. And good evening once again, everybody. Welcome to the programme. It's Dave Fanning here, as usual, till 8 o'clock on Radio 1, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's the way it is. And tonight, a bit of a different programme. Loads of music, loads of great music, as much as we can fit in, provided we don't talk too much. But I want to talk to him anyway. Aidan Gillen, you're very welcome to the programme. It's a kind of a desert island disc thing we've got going here now. Let's, before we do Thank anything, Mr. Much. Actor Aidan Gillen, yeah. start with the first piece of music. We've got Stars of Heaven. OK, first piece of music. Um, well, I will nail my colours to the mast straight away and say that the Stars of Heaven are the most awesome band ever to come out of Ireland. Um, um, Stephen Ryan uh, is a genius. Um, as you know, critical acclaim and commercial success don't always go uh, hand in hand. But with this band, with his band The Revenants, um, it's just plain and clear that, you know, he is a major force in Irish music. So this is uh, from the album Sacred Heart Hotel, which is a brilliant album. Uh, the track So You Know. <laughs> So you know is what it's called, and that's from Stars of Heaven. Aidan Gillen is here picking his favourite music, and that's the way it's going to be for the next hour or so. And in fact, um, judging by the email that I got from you, Aidan, in terms of the amount of stuff that you have here, in terms of what mm-hmm. you want to know about, etc., um, I would get the impression that um, it's a good thing that we're going to carry this on the 11th hour on RT2 on Wednesday night, because you can see them, because yeah, there's so yeah. much stuff. A lot of what you like, and you really seem to be kind of lost in it, is some of the best music that I was like around doing on the radio between about 80 and 86 and, yeah, that, and well, gigs. And that's stuff. what I heard about All about. that kind of stuff, is it? It really is. Yeah, like yeah. Stars of Heaven, Revenants, you went on. That track there in particular, it's got a velvety, underground kind of thing. It does have a pretty velvet underground influence. I mean, Stars of Heaven have a kind of 
I suppose it's a, a blend of like Americana, folk, country, and something a bit heavier. And that something a bit heavier would be the Velvet Underground. Um, Speaking of which, yeah, well, the next <laughs> the next track is um, it's not the Velvet Underground, but it's Nico. I mean, I first heard Nico when I heard the album uh, the Velvet Underground and Nico, which um, my brother had, and um, she sings on like three or four tracks and that. You know, Ultimate Power to Use, and I'll Be Your Mirror. Um, the opening track of that. Uh, Sunday morning was mm. one that was kind of on the list and I thought you know that's been played a lot and I thought something with Nico on it and then I thought well how about something from a different album and this one is from the album Chelsea Girls a song that uh, Bob Dylan wrote for Nico apparently uh, before the Velvet Underground when he met her in 1965 and um, she recorded it, it in 67 I think it's on, on the album Chelsea Girl I may have said that already and uh, it's just you know it's her voice is this was the thing. It's like this strange kind of haunting monotone. It's very kind of, it's very monotone, but it's very affecting. And this song is like perfect pop. You know, it's simple and it's true and it is, I'll keep it with mine. Okay, I'll keep it with mine. Chelsea Girl is Nico, written by Bob Dylan. Here goes. I'll keep it with mine is the title that is Bob Dylan written by that is and that is uh, um, Nico and Aidan Gillen is here talking about it just a little bit some pieces about you Aidan before yeah. you go on about the next piece of music what's um, going on first of all The Wire is where a lot of people will know you from yeah, the last while um, was Queer as Folk all those years ago so um, all that stuff. tell us about The Wire what's happened there um, they? well The Wire um, actually is about to be shown again on BBC2 which is interesting they're going to show the whole thing in its entirety uh, like, which is 60 episodes I think right um, from start to finish, starting next month. I think it's going to be something pretty spectacular, like five nights a week. 
All right. or whatever. Um, so your life for, is... But that'll even still take 12 weeks. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, like, it was, I presume it was a brilliant thing to do. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's the most yeah, praised yeah. television program since the Yeah, Sopranos. like, I mean, it's, you know, it's just a, such a kind of intelligent kind of project about, you know, kind of about something, you know, that kind of has something to say about, you know... Um, not just American society, but our society, our kind of first world societies are kind of how we kind of look after each other or don't look after each other. You know, um, it was just a fantastic thing to kind of uh, find yourself in, which is, which, was, which is kind of what happened. I went to New York to do a play in kind of 93, you know, um, for like four months mm. and um, ended up... Um, in Baltimore for like three years and um, working with you know the smartest people I've ever met in television or you know film for that matter so there's that but I mean we finished shooting that over a year ago so kind of yeah even though it's still around I kind of don't think about it too much yeah but I mean as you say still around I mean the box set mm. stuff is like a huge thing or no, no it will be around and people yeah. will talk about it kind of like BBC two is like giving you a box set now and if you think about it it's like you, you see one um, night yeah 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 no, that's all good. Do you want to know about other things? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go and talk about other things in a minute or two, but we could certainly do other things. Can I just go back a little bit? I mean, like yeah. this music that you like here, as I say, I, I'm not trying to place you in between 80 and 86 mm. and that's it, but there's so much that is there I in know, terms of the gigs you saw in Dublin, etc. Yeah. What was it before that? It was Drumcondra and Glass Nevin Drumcondra, School. Yeah, yeah I'm, from, I'm from Drumcondra, uh, Clonliffe Road, so I kind of grew up around there, kind of hanging around um, school, Christian Brothers, Glass Nevin. And what was important? Know. Was music important? Was sport important? No, sport wasn't important. Right. Was was movies important? Go to the cinema. Yeah, movies was important. I mean, movies became more important kind of later, you know. Um, right. Now, music mainly. I mean, like so, you, you mentioned the old and acting well, also. Band. I mean, you know, when I was yeah, fourteen, was fifteen, sixteen, yeah. I was doing plays. Yeah. In fact, when I was thirteen, in the project in Dublin with this group, Dublin Youth Theatre, and the project was where you know all the best stuff in Dublin was happening at the time. Yeah. Including music, and there was like plays going on there. You know, there was like the Sheridans, Neil Jordan, um, you know, uh, there was. There were gigs in the project. We were hanging out, and like that area was not nothing like it kind of looks now. As you know, it was yeah. like just dilapidated. I'm talking about Temple Bar, um, quite shabby, kind of Berlin. You know, it was it was very very run down. Yeah. Um, but you know, you'd go into the bars there after the plays, and you would when you were 13 or 14, if you were me. And um, you know, there was be and there were lots of bands around, and and, and you and, were and bottom. Stuff. You were bottom in the midsummer's night dream. Um, I was, yeah. When I was, I mean, that was kind of my kind of. Uh, kind of stepping stone if you like into professional theatre because I did that like right after I left school yeah um, and, I'm, and I kind of managed to get my equity card out of it um, so no, no music was important so you know uh, the underground venue which is now some kind of a lap dancing joint on uh, Dame Street uh, bag it in that's right uh, yeah. you know um, sides even you know and um, the new in all these places yeah. you know um, I would I would so walk around. Of, now I would walk yeah. around Dublin with my walk on. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. For you know, with six hours tape. at a time with my cassettes, listening yeah. to you know whatever. And the reason I picked the reason that I picked a lot of tracks from that time is because they just they just become more imprinted in your mind when you're that age. You know what I mean? And the kind of world is kind of opening up, and this is the kind of soundtrack that you choose for it. Yeah, of course. Um, it's not all kind of from. No, it's not Green, indeed. We, we, we maybe, there's maybe one track okay. that's like post. Let's go back to one that is. Uh, you got Ice Blink Love here from uh, Cocktail Twins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Nico, from Nico to kind of uh, Liz Fraser, you know, they're for me, they're the kind of two most kind of intriguing and, you know, haunting and kind mm. of strange uh, and compelling kind of voices in um, pop music. And the Cocktail Twins, Twins music for me is like the uh, musical equivalent of like a kaleidoscope, of looking into a kaleidoscope. It's like, you know, hypnotic and reflecting and like talking through my... No, 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 exactly. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what it is. You know? And, you know, she's singing like she's got a direct line into like a parallel kind of much more fluid kind of ethereal world with its own language, you know, a language all of its own. And that's another kind of theme maybe with some of these songs is, uh, um, that, you know, I'm not always after kind of knowing exactly what's been said, why it's been said. You know, I like a bit of enigma and a bit of mystery and this Cocktail Twins or this more Coil are kind of steeped in it. Well, then let's take a blast. This is Ice Blink Look, and this is from Cocteau Twins, so it is.
Hi, Craig Doyle here. As a sports presenter and triathlete, I'm aware of the need for strong bones, but I never realised how many people suffer from osteoporosis. It affects one in two women and one in five men in Ireland over 50. Simply including three servings of milk, cheese or yoghurt per day as part of your balanced diet can go a long way to helping develop and maintain healthy bones and prevent osteoporosis, whatever your age. Brought to you by the Irish Osteoporosis Society and the National Dairy Council, working together to prevent osteoporosis. For information, visit 3 if you're thinking of buying some gorgeous fragrances and skincare products, the best advice I have for you is... Wait. Wait till you get to the airport. With airport shopping, you'll get 40% discount on downtown recommended retail prices on selected products. So next time you're flying, leave your shopping for the airport and take advantage of the great value for money offers with airport shopping at Dublin, Cork and Shannon. DAA, helping you on your way.
Aidan Gillen is here picking his favourite music. That's uh, music from um, a fantastic album from around 91 Direction and My Bloody Valentine and that track there from their album Loveless is called When You Sleep. Um, you love the album as much as I do, do you? Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, the soundscapes that it throws up was Incredible. kind of unlike anything I'd ever heard before. And, um, and since. Yeah. Um, and they it provokes kind of, for me anyway, all these kind of opposing feelings. There's a lot of these kind of opposing things like you know it's ecstatic and foreboding at the same time and it suggests like creation and destruction you know um it's the those, that guitar sound it's like this droning kind of guitar sound going off it's like bombs or ghosts or orgasms yeah. or something um it suggests apocalyptic kind of something or other you know there's a, i was reading this book by um P Peter Murphy, you know Peter Murphy. Oh, who, um, who writes John the Revelator? Yeah, yeah, John the Revelator. Yeah. There's a line in where this, I think it's a dream sequence or something. There's, there's a group of people looking at a, you know, nuclear apocalyptic explosion, you know, and it's like red kind of liquid sky, or whatever. And the guy says, nobody ever told me that it would look this beautiful, and that's kind of what this music, uh, yeah, means to me. And first, and f sorry, go ahead. No, he's just gonna say that. Like, I mean, I did see them live at the SFX, and I didn't like the gig. Uh -huh. I loved the album. You saw the Electric Picnic, and. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw I saw them at SFX too, um, right. and Electric Picnic. Electric Picnic. And I'm maybe, wrong, am I? But no, well, I mean, the SFX was better. It was the first uh -huh. place I ever was somebody attempted to sell me an earplug or a set of earplugs at a concert. I'll which tell I was, you, there was a nine. Not piece having of any of it. I never have since. <laughs> um, it wasn't loud enough at the Electric Picnic. <laughs> it wasn't. No, maybe, but it had much more of a. It had more of a sonic kind of assault. I mean, it was like 15 minutes of kind of you know bombardment of kind of right. feedback at one point. But again, this is kind of music that I can't make out the lyrics of. I kind of don't. Know what matter. it's on it doesn't matter yeah. it kind of and for music that is that uh, oblique and kind of um hard to kind of get a grasp on yeah. it kind of triggers a really uh, deep emotional uh, response in me anyway oh, hold on what about hawkwind i don't know if you actually saw it not, but i know you saw yeah, uh, like, I mean, that's a sonic assault as well that was one of the few things <clears throat> i ever left no, that was one of the first gigs that i stood outside wishing that i could be inside uh, you know not because i knew anything about hawkwind but because it was a in poster my good. well it wasn't even a poster actually it was an ad in the evening herald and um, when mm. i was like 13 or something um in what was my parish hall the saint francis xavier's hall oh, yeah. which is like the s of x which is now some apartments um <laughs> and uh, I went down to check it out, yeah, because I saw this ad tonight at the St. Francis Xavier's Hall, Hawkwind in concert. Yeah. And I thought, well, it couldn't be, couldn't be. And because, um, you know, for me, it was like, sale, you know, altar boys kind of stole sales of work. Yeah, you, know, you couldn't my, have a rock you know, stuff. Like, and then, But yeah, sure enough, they're dark street, you know, people with long hair kind of um, just lying on the street outside, this rumble from inside. You know, and that street, and I, you know, because I ended up going to all these great things there, like in yeah. the following ten years, including that, you know, those Echo and the Bunny Man, the Smiths, Susie and the Banshees, I mean, just like a lot of stuff. And any every time I walk past the street, which is on my route from, you know, my where I grew up in from Condra into town, I get like a a real kind of but a feeling. You know what I mean? It makes me happy walking down that street. And it, it makes, makes you, it makes me it's excited. A block of flats. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a block of flats, but it's a block of um, it's mm. kind of social housing, so it has yeah. there has something going for it. Right. I was kind of pleased when I heard when my sister told me that. Mm. Um, but you know, things well, move I, on, don't they? I saw Hawkwind in the stadium once, and they had the topless dancer Stacia. God, it was the worst gig I ever saw in my life. Much as I kind of yeah, like Hawkwind. Well. Can we move on, move on to the next one, which would be Johnny Cash? Yeah, Johnny Cash. I came to quite late. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I suppose as you get kind of older or you kind of listen to music, you kind of start looking to see what can, you know, wh who's, who the influences are. And um, this, these later albums are the ones I'm into, you know, that he recorded with, encouraged by Rick Rubin. And, you know, it's when yeah. he was dying, really, um, in the, the last few years, or when the people around him were dying, when June uh, Carter Cash, his, uh, you know, much loved wife, was dying. Um, he just recorded tons and tons of you know songs and um i suppose that maybe that was his way of like dealing with what was going on in his life and um, but they're like great tracks like the beast in me hurt um this one which is a nick cave song mercy See. now i love nick cave's version i love nick cave mm. um and you know and he certainly wouldn't hold back when he uh you know sang this song or anytime i ever saw him singing it um but the mercy seat i picked because it is a man who is dying, thinking about, you know, a man thinking about his own impending death, I think, you know, singing about a man who's uh, facing the same thing. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. the two things click. And um, you can hear in his voice, you know, his voice, it's, you know, you can hear it's not easy for him just doing, you can hear the effort in that he puts into these songs. Um, and when he says that he's not afraid to die in it, I believe him. Okay, well, let's give it a blast. It's the Nick Cave song. It is the version from Johnny Cash. It is the Mercy Seat. Mm -hmm. 
It all began when they took me from my home and put me on death row. A crime for which I'm totally innocent, you know. I began to warm and chill to objects and their feels. A ragged cup, a twisted mop, the face of Jesus in my suit. Those sinister dinner deals, the meal trolley's wicked wheels. A hook bone rising from my food, and all things either good or ungood. And the mercy seat is waiting, and I think my head is burning, and in a way I'm yearning to be done with all this weighing of the truth. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and any way I told the truth, and I'm not afraid to die. I hear stories from the chamber. Christ was born into a manger, and like some ragged stranger, he died upon the cross. Might I say it seems so fitting? In its way, he was a carpenter by trade, or at least that's what I'm told. My kill hands tattooed evil. Across its brother's fist, that filthy fire. They did nothing to challenge or resist. In heaven, his throne is made of gold. The ark of his testament is stowed. A throne from which I am told all history does unfold. It's made of wood and wire, and my body is on fire. And God is never far away. Into the mercy seat I climb. My head is shaved, my head is wired, and like a moth that tries to enter the bright eye, I go shuffling out of life just to hide in death a while. And anyway, I never lie. And the mercy seat is waiting, and I think my head is burning, and in a way I'm yearning. To be done with all this weighing of the truth, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and any way I told the truth, and I'm not afraid to die. And the mercy seat is burning, and I think my head is glowing, and in a way I'm hoping to be done with all this twisting of the truth, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and any way there was no proof. And I'm not afraid to die. And the mercy seat is glowing, and I think my head is smoking. And in a way, I'm hoping to be done with all these looks of disbelief. A life for a life, and a truth for a truth. And I've got nothing left to lose. And I'm not afraid to die. And the mercy seat is smoking, and I think my head is melting. And in a way, that's helping. To be done with all this twisting of the truth, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and any way I told the truth, but I'm afraid I told a lie. There you go, that's the Mercy Seat. It's from uh, Johnny Cash. It's a Nick Cave song. Aidan Gillen is here talking music. I want to talk um, go-betweens right Go-betweens. What do the go-betweens mean to you, Aidan? Quite a lot, actually. Um, I think um, that Grant McLennan and uh, Robert Forster are one of the great songwriting teams of like yeah. the last 30 years. Um, they came along in this wave of Antipodean bands. There was like a few of them, really. It was kind of them. It was the Triffids yeah. and the Clean. And they, they all have kind of similar kind of they have things in common, but for me, the go-betweens are just by far and away like uh, the best of them. The um, Triffids, it's so long. Born Sandy Devotional was an album I had by yeah, them. I yeah, loved yeah, it. Yeah. Long times I've heard from them. Wide um, open well, road. Well, they're, well, he's, yeah, the guy's dead anyway. But. Yeah, I know, but I just haven't <laughs> gone back to those albums um, in a long time. You're hell of a summer. Right hell of a summer. Them. Hell of a summer. Was like, <laughs> yeah. That was, the, I think, the best track. Go be, go between them. Um, right. Um, they stay together. You know, they, they kind of were together. They were apart, but they kind of... Um, they always, despite their better efforts, kind of seem to stay together, which is great because I, I think the two of their latter albums, The Friends of Rachel Worth right. and uh, Oceans Apart, which this next track are, uh, is from, are kind of, um, 
the two of their better albums. Um, again, they kind of went under the radar a little bit. I mean, I think their biggest hit came to number something like 78 in the charts or something right. ridiculous like this. Mm. And that was Streets of Our Town, which I thought was a hit. But I kind of looked it up recently and it was, you know. It was nothing. Well, it, it didn't. I don't think it kind of yeah, but they paid were, them anything. Yeah, but they, they, they weren't probably meant to. Be. They were an album's band as such. Did you see yeah. them live? They played Dublin a bunch of times. I did see them live. Um, I saw them live a few times. The first time I saw them was uh, in Trinity College. I think it was 1986. Yeah, the gig put on by Ian Wilson and Dave Fanning. Free gigs. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you just put it on. And, out, in the, um, out in the cricket field. The cricket field. It was raining. It was a kind of warm day in the rain. Um, there wasn't like. A hundred million people there. No, um, it was interesting for me to see them though, because when I when they started singing the songs, I was like, "All right," because Robert Forster was singing all the songs that, or Grant McLennan was singing all the songs that I thought Robert was singing, right. and the other vice versa. Yeah, they kind of, um, yeah. and they're quite different. But I had them mixed up, so that was educational. Um, I saw them a few times since. Saw Robert Forster in Dublin quite recently yeah. on um, doing his kind of touring his new album, and that was uh, really, really, really sweet. And it was kind of good the way he he only sang his own songs from the Go Betweens. And when he put the song in um, that he wrote, Demon Days, that he wrote with uh, it was the last thing that they wrote together. And uh, Grant McLean had started it and he finished it. Right. But you know he didn't shout about it. He just put it in the middle of the set somewhere. And mm. so that's, that's actually a great song as well. Cool, but this one, the statue, I think, is just. Uh, I think it's one of the better songs of this album. It's bright, right. uplifting. Well, let's give it a blast. This is the go betweens, and yeah. this track is called "The Statue." Night I haunt the 
Thatcher was the title. That's when the go-betweens. Aidan Gillen is picking the music and the next one would be, and this is one of the ones you mentioned to me a few times, all right, no question about it, The Replacements. Yeah, The Replacements, Unsatisfied from the album, a brilliant album, Let It Be. Um, uh, That's yeah, the one where they're sitting on the roof. They're sitting on a roof. Um, and I like the declamatory nature of the first line of the song. Do you know what I mean? It kind of... They're a, they're a kind of heart on, on their sleeve uh, band, actually, The Replacements. You know, they're very kind of honest and kind of stayed kind of true to what they did they kind of I suppose came out of like what's known as kind of college rock scene it was like yeah, them Orion course, Orion yeah. became kind of embraced by the mainstream but they always kind of stayed outside and they probably always would they had a much more kind of chaotic quality about them and in live shows and stuff they were kind of uh, chaotic and kind of organic kind of uh, un- fragile kind of yeah. experiencing where anything you know was liable to happen I like um, American you know American punk actually I could take quite can take a lot more seriously than kind of you know British punk or whatever because I think it's kind of born out of it's a stance kind of born out of necessity as opposed to like a fashion uh, statement I think you know and um, with this song um, yeah just listen to it I mean it's uh, what, what his voice is just kind of raw the 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 feeling is kind of there you know it's it's exposed they're a very kind of exposed kind of raw jangly kind of nervy. Um, Band. Okay, and well, let's give it a blast. The replacements. Yeah. treating half of your weight problem. Why do 95% of dieters fail? Because by dieting alone, you're merely treating the symptoms of your weight problem. At Motivation Weight Management Clinics, through private individual consultations, healthy eating plans and behavior modification, we will help you get to the root cause of the problem so that you can maintain your desired weight forever. Call Motivation Weight Management Clinics today on 1850 30 6000 or see motivation.ie. 20 clinics nationwide. Here's what people are saying about smallbusinesscan.com. I find it really refreshing to see small businesses and entrepreneurs coming together on smallbusinesscan.com. It's the first time I've seen real advice being shared. It gives me the chance to talk with a network of experts about my business. 
Well, and in today's climate, it's great to have that sort of support out there. In fact, I'd recommend it to all small businesses. Smallbusinesscan.com. Buy small businesses and entrepreneurs for business growth. One in six on the bus. Jack Lynch, the first time round. Opportunity knocks. Brendan Boyer, the birdie song. Salt your own crisps. Rhodesian independence. Glenda Jackson in love and in the nip. And 12 pennies in a shilling. Remember this? So do we. Get lifestyle articles, exclusive discounts and much more, all for the over 55s. Available now on a new website called everymonday.ie. Everymonday.ie. Your week starts here. Now you can enjoy exceptional value in one of Dublin's top city centre hotels, the Gresham, for a room-only rate of just €89, Euro, Sunday to Thursday. A great location with restaurants, shops and theatres on your doorstep. Call 1850-777 and treat yourself from just €89 Euro at the luxurious Gresham Hotel. Okay, you heard music there, first of all, from um, The Replacements, Unsatisfied. That was just before the break. And that track there, of course, is from the um, unmistakable dulcet tones of uh, Cork person Carl Coughlin. In other words, that's uh, Payday. Tell us about Carl Coughlin. Uh, uh, he's Aiden the number Gillen one best thing about Ireland, <laughs> according to you. According to The according Word to the magazine. Word magazine. It's out at the moment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Carl, I suppose, has more than a little in common with Stephen Ryan and other contemporaries. And they were both... Um, Brilliant and unsung. Maybe, yeah. Kind of... 
And again, it's like on along the radar line or kind of just um, underneath. And by the way, if you like any of this music and you want to, you know, you're going to get it, try and pay for it. Um, if it's like Carl or Stephen, not that you can kind of, I don't know where you draw the line there, but you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of nice for a musicians to kind of get paid for what yeah, they do. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so you know, whatever, wh- whatever about where they stood with kind of um, commercial success. I mean, the critical critical acclaim is huge, and the records are there, you know, and they are brilliant. Um, Carl, I first heard with Michael Disney, and he had this kind of lazy, kind of very cork kind of um, drawl, very melancholic thing going on, which was great, but um, he kind of evolved into, you know, he went to these different, like the, the Fatima Mansion is much more kind of abrasive, kind of uh, caustic kind of sound, and um, when he got into this later solo stuff, his voice just became much more clearer. I mean, what he was singing about clearer, and his voice literally became clearer. I think his voice has got a lot better. I salute you, Carl Cochran. Aiden, just work-wise for you, just a couple of things. Um, the big movie, 12 Rounds, Rennie Harlan. Um, you play a what? A killer of people. I play the nemesis of the uh, hero. So, yeah, the bad guy. It's um, it's just a big kind who's of the hero? action kind of nonsense. He's a WWF wrestling superstar called John, John Cena. Cena. Yeah, the, John Cena, He's a good yeah. bulk, actually. Yeah. Is He's he? big. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big kind of movie, though. It's blockbuster yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a is big it fun action that? number. Action, well, it was, it was fun. That's, that's, what I was, yeah. that's why I was there. Did you get better food on the set, do you? Um, uh, the food was all right, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's what my kids think, you know, films are. Yeah. It's a place for free food. Well, tell us about Free Fall. In America, it's like donuts. From free food to free fall. Free Fall is a BBC film uh, written and directed by um, Dominic Savage, who's arguably the best uh, television film... Uh, Director working in uh, British TV or film, for that matter. He um, works in the tradition of um, people like Alan Clark uh, right. or Ken Loach. You know, when he was doing his TV stuff, um, in that it's kind of hard hitting, kind of and true. Uh, it's about this one is about it's a kind of multi stranded story about our obsessions with like money and uh, ownership and how we. Um, kind of lose ourselves, or the tragedy of kind of losing yourself in pursuit of all these things, all these things that we don't need, that kind of people push on us all the time. Um, so... But it's good and it's big and it's on BBC pretty soon. And yeah, and about, I think it's in about, I think it's in about six weeks or something. Yeah, I'm not uh, entirely sure, okay, but it's coming up and yeah. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to mention it because I, I think it's going to be very good. Okay, and what are you? Are you, are you Dublin, South of Ireland, London, LA, New York? You mean where do I live? Everything. Yeah, kind of all of the above, really. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've, I, I, you know, I like this. You know, it means that I can kind of move from one place to the other and do a different thing. It's like because yeah. not only is it all those places, but it's uh, theater, film, television. Um, so and if so, if you keep moving around, it can be you know the things can be quite different. You yeah, know, because exactly, you might yeah. you might be two years before you're back, and then you kind of can just do something else. You, you love pigeonholed, and you don't have to get pigeonholed if you don't want to anyway, because yeah. you don't have to do things as you want to do. Of course. Yeah, I do. I've had a good life. I've had yeah. a, uh, I've enjoyed my kind of working. Oh, life. listen, continue to enjoy it, and like your music, the, the passion in your head about the music. Mm. We are going to continue this. Let's say on the 11th hour on RT2 this coming Wednesday night. But Yay. let's pick an outgoing track there. Now, you, yeah, it, um, it looks like it might be uh, REM or uh, Smiths. Uh, it? No, it's going to be New Order. Your silent face which is my favorite song off the uh, power corruption and lies album yeah um the sound of this album is surprisingly kind of uh euphoric coming out of the kind of heaviness of you know joy division and ian curtis yeah and you can hear the kind of uh the bottom kind of layer i suppose or the kind of uh, foundation of kind of the whole kind of uk kind of um dance culture here kind of you know five years before it happened right and this song to me kind of sounds like a big gleaming spaceship kind of looming out over the forest like in Close Encounters okay well listen Mon Farah <laughs> Hayden um, Aiden Gillen thanks a million for dropping in and good luck with everything you're doing we'll thank see, you we'll see you again on the yeah, TV yeah, yeah, yeah. good luck take thanks. it easy here it is new order and by the way I'll see you tomorrow at 7 